these noodles are driving me crazy. I almost cry from the level of spiciness when I eat them. <laughs> And I can't stop watching bulldog videos on Instagram. I mean it. But how does this thing that quite literally causes me pain keep making me crave bulldog fire noodles almost every time I see them? This is the ultimate power of branding. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you how to brand spicy food that hurts, how bulldog uses sound branding and gamification to make these noodles extra addictive. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Lisa. This is Tobo Brand. So cook your ramen and let's begin. Why would anyone in their right mind eat something that hurts them? I wish I knew, but self-destructive behaviors are pretty common for people, aren't they? An extra glass of wine, another slice of cake, a pack of chips with the movie. All of these products are not healthy for you and you know it. But I don't mean to be a health nut because I definitely enjoy my extra glass of wine. And because these products only hurt you in the distant, almost too remote future, while in the moment you enjoy them. And spicy food is an entirely different story. The moment you decide you're brave enough today and want to have some fun with fire sauce or bulldog fire noodles, you sign a suffering contract for the following 10 minutes. Or even more, as 75% of Americans experience heartburn after spicy food and 36 of those avoid spicy food as a result. What I'm saying is it is unnatural for the majority of people to eat spicy food because it brings a negative effect momentarily. However, 37% of Americans consider themselves spicy food aficionados and 45% of those who suffer from heartburn are still willing to endure it for their favorite dishes like pizza, tacos or hot buffalo wings. And for these people who know they will burn their mouth and then hurt their stomach, it is much like willingly eating a Swedish delicacy, surströmming, the worst smelling food on earth, a fermented herring. But when you eat something disgusting for you but gourmet for others, a delicacy, it brings you an element of status and a feeling of conquest. And that is why people keep buying spicy food despite their suffering. And to prove that, I've decided to ask an expert, a friend who doesn't have a natural spice tolerance but keeps eating crazy spicy stuff. And what I discovered is he doesn't actually like this spicy taste because he usually eats regular mild food. It is more like a form of social interaction for him. My friend has a spicy body with whom they usually gather up and try these crazy spicy sauces, chips and noodles. They have their mouths burning but laugh at the same time because this activity is no different from trying a bunch of sour candy or different types of whiskey. It is an entertaining time with your friends, much like a party game. But the spicy food industry would not exist on these random occasional purchases for parties. So how are they making people eat more spicy food? It is surely a clever usage of gamification techniques. Did you ever notice how all spicy food tends to have levels on it? Take a look at this. There are regular different flavors of Bulldog, everyone's favorite carbonara, my favorite quattro cheese, that generally don't look like anything remotely spicy, but we will talk about this later. And here, here we got Bulldog Classic, Bulldog Double Spice, Bulldog Triple Spice. For the record, my favorite Bulldog flavor is like the least spicy and I only add the third of this spicy sauce. This Bulldog Triple Spicy is hotter than the most spicy Tabasco Habanero sauce. It is crazy how someone could actually eat an extra spicy Bulldog. And look, there are levels from the beginner to superclass, which claims to consist of only 1% of all people. So, if you've always dreamed of becoming a member of 1% Club, this is your chance. There are similar levels of spiciness for Tabasco sauce, Doritos and many other spicy products. And it all brings us down to the unique feature of the spicy product marketing, the Scoville scale. No other product, not a sour candy, not a sweet chocolate, has a such a scale to measure anything besides spiciness. It means that every spicy product makes you play a game. How much of the spice can you tolerate? What's your level in Scoville? 
And such a gamification technique awakes the desire to compete, to try the higher and higher levels of spiciness. Moreover, once you have tried a crazy hot ramen, you have achieved the rarest super class rank and feel like you have conquered a fire beast. What a motivation to gradually increase your level of spice. And it works. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more marketing and branding tactics that actually work. What's interesting is how Bulldog leveraged the power of gamification to drastically increase their sales. Bulldog Fire Ramen was launched by Sam Young not so long ago, in 2012, but it quickly grew in popularity. And here is why. First, Sam Young meticulously studied their audience and decided to target millennials and Gen Z, reinventing lame ramen soup noodles as a popular snack for youth. Look, this is how regular ramen noodles look for people who don't have time for a decent meal. And here, here is a bulldog. Entirely different image. And then Sam Young dropped the soup element from their noodles and made them closer to chips and crackers than to, um, soup? Guess what young generation prefers? And finally, this innovative product needed an innovative promotion strategy. That is why in 2014 they started a huge viral YouTube challenge that peaked at its popularity in 2017, the year of all the mighty challenges we warmly remember. That girl is a real crowd, please. Small world, all the friends know of me. So the fire noodle challenge went viral, making hundreds of YouTubers slurp the spiciest bulldog noodles for people's entertainment. And the results were beyond expectations. In 2014, the sales went up by almost a million US dollars. In 2016, Bulldog became Sam Young's best seller, accounting for 55% of the company's sales. And in 2017, when the challenge was the most popular, Bulldog faced double-digit growth, reaching the point of hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. This is how a gamification was used to spite the interest and attract hundreds of thousands of customers willing to try a new spicy product. But there's more. Bulldog became so unprecedentedly popular as it has a very cute and clever visual branding. You see, most of the flavors don't even look like they're spicy at all. They don't use typical black, red and orange colors and images of flames that practically scream danger on the neuromarketing marketing level. On the contrary, the cheesy duck the cheesy duck seems so peaceful and magical that you expect nothing different from cheetah's cheese puffs. And then, then you try it and suddenly... Oh, that's spicy. <laughs> Look, this bulldog flavor basically looks like it is a present for Valentine's Day, not something that will burn your mouth. A similar case of branding a visual appearance of the product in an opposite way to its essence is liquid death. A bottle of water that <laughs> a bottle of water a bottle of water that looks so unhealthy that reminds of cool drinks like energetics and craft beers. I saw several examples of designers challenging themselves to reimagine something healthy like apple veggies to look like an ultra sweet super unhealthy snack and vice versa. The point is, spicy products depend heavily on the packaging, and if it promises something funny and innocent, like a cartoon duck in your favorite colors, more people will be attracted and associated with fun rather than with infernal burning flames. During my trip to Southeast Asia, I was practically hypnotized by Bulldog and wanted to try it so bad that I no longer minded my low spice tolerance. And now I can stop. <laughs> And one more thing. Did you know that hearing is the second most important sense for a human? We get about 10% of information from the hearing and 10% from smell, touch and taste combined. That is why sounds are so important in branding. Check this out. I am sure you can easily guess the product advertised just from this sound. Or this one. Or maybe this one. And Bulldog is making something crazy here. Much like Pepsi recognized for their mouth-watering sounds in their ads, the noodle brand decided to leverage the power of ASMR. 
but Boltec encouraged their customers to film such videos. And now my Instagram consists of people eating Boltec with this signature slurp. <laughs> User-generated content is a super powerful tool to raise awareness, increase interest, raise the desire and build a community. And Bulldog is getting the best of it. Moreover, this enormous amount of videos where people eat super hot noodles provides a social proof much needed for a spicy product. It basically proves that Bulldog noodles can be enjoyed and they don't have a deadly level of spice, only the level that can be handled by all these people. Can you handle it? I can't, but I still love it. In summary, branding a spicy product is a challenging task that shows the ultimate power of the right positioning, packaging and promotion. Gamification techniques make spicy products stand out from the crowded space of snacks and sauces, welcoming the consumers to join the contest and prove their worth. While sound branding sends shivers down your spine, making your craving spicy noodles in the middle of the night. Thank you for watching this video. Write down in the comments what's your favorite spicy product. And if you learned something new today, don't forget to like this video. Hit the bell button so you won't miss even more interesting branding cases the next time.